In this video, we're going to cover how to get started with Scratch. To begin, you'll want to either sign into your account or create an account with Scratch. If your teacher has created a classroom in Scratch, they may have created an account for you already, so be sure to check with your teacher first. If you're creating your own account, you can simply go to Join Scratch and follow the dialogues to create your account. Once you've created your account, you'll be able to sign in to Scratch by clicking the Sign In button, typing in your username, password, and clicking Sign In. Once signed in, you'll be brought to your Scratch dashboard where you can see what's happening, anything that's new in the Scratch world, under News, Featured Projects, Studios, and so much more. Now let's go ahead and dive in to creating a project. To do that, you're going to click on the Create button. Now we've arrived at a fresh, brand new project. Now let's go through some of the different parts of the Scratch user interface. We'll begin with the title. Here you can see the title on the upper menu area. The current title of this project is untitled because it's a brand new project. Let's go ahead and update that and title it My Project. So simply type in the name of your project and hit the enter key to save it. Now let's take a look at some of these other areas in the user interface. Here on the right hand side, you can see where you will ultimately be able to preview your project. This project has been already loaded with a sprite, and that is the cat sprite from scratch. You can also see it down here. So a sprite is essentially any object, player, um, you know, item that you want to include in your scratch game or program. So in this case, we've been given one default sprite, and we can go ahead and delete it by clicking the trash can, or we can just leave them there for the time being. You can also see some other information about this sprite when it's selected. So we can see the name, where it's located on the X and Y axis of our game, whether it's shown or not via the eyeball buttons, either shown or hidden, we can see the size of the sprite. We can change this number. So if I change it from 100 to 85, it's going to become smaller. If I go over 100, it's going to become bigger than its default size. We can also change the direction. This is just the angle at which the sprite is positioned. So adjust that like so. We can flip our sprite as well on this option here. We can choose to not rotate it with this option. So it's up to you what you want to do, but go ahead and play around with those options. So as you could see, we were changing the different information about the sprite. It was adjusting here on the project area. There are some different ways that we can view our project area. As you can see, this kind of default mode here is selected, but we can also decrease the size of that if we want to work more in our coding area over here, or we can go full screen to play our project in full screen mode. So we click that to go back to normal. And now let's take a look at the coding side of Scratch. So here on the left hand side, you'll notice some different tabs. We have the code tab, costumes tab, and sounds tab. With the code tab specifically, you can see all the different types of coding blocks that we have access to. Motion blocks allow our sprite to move. You can click that block. Our cat moves across the screen. can also change the looks of our sprite. This can include maybe our sprite saying something, changing their costume, the backdrop, changing colors, a lot to do there. We can add sounds. Let's go ahead and try this one. We can also change pitch and volume associated with sounds in our projects. Next up are event blocks. These allow things to happen in our programs, our games. So we can use this block here to start a series of code. And ultimately what, we're, what happens is when we click the green flag, that means we want the code to run. So anything af added after this block will allow the code to run in our project. There's a lot of other really cool event blocks and you'll learn more about those and the different projects within the curriculum. Control allows us to control when things happen as well. So they work a lot in conjunction with the event blocks. 
So if we want something to happen forever, we can put some blocks inside of it and it will just kind of be a continuous loop of that code running. We can also add sensing blocks. So for example, if we add this block here, we can choose to have a piece of code only run when let's say our sprite here is touching the mouse like so. Operators can be used to create unique and custom code interactions as can variables. So be sure to check those out. This button down here will open up the extensions. There are a lot of really cool extensions in Scratch, such as video sensing, text to speech, and you can actually incorporate some hardware into Scratch as well. So that's a quick overview of the different code blocks we can use. As you saw, when I was clicking and dragging these blocks, this is kind of considered the, the code area or the editing area. So anything we put in this area is what this sprite ultimately will do. So if I put this move block here and I click it, you'll see it move across the screen. So ultimately all the coding you do in Scratch gets done in this area here. One of the last items associated with coding specifically is your backpack. So the backpack is located down here and you can drag and drop code in there. And ultimately what it does is it saves code for you. So if you want to reuse a piece of code, you can just click, drag it and drop it into your backpack and it'll save it for later. Next up, we'll take a look at costumes. Costumes are like different animations that we can create for our sprites or different objects in our games. In this example, our cat has two costumes. So if I click back and forth, it makes it look like he's running. So we can use costumes to create different animations and movement, or we can use it to change the state of our objects as well. Within costumes, you can see the different editing tools. We can draw our own sprites if we want to, um, or we can upload them from the library. So let's take a look at how to do that. So to upload a new costume for our sprite here, we could click on the choose a costume button and that's going to open up the costume library. So if I wanted to look for a cat costume and I want him to be flying, I could click this one and now I've added another costume for my sprite. We can also create costumes from scratch by clicking the paint option and then we can draw our own sprites that way too in costumes. Now let's take a look at the sounds tab. That meow that we played earlier, that was because this sprite has a sound associated with it. And so we can add sounds from the library, we can upload our own sounds or record them as well. So you can choose sounds from the library and you can see there's lots of different categories that we can choose from. There are some different editing tools for the sound bytes that we have in our projects, so be sure to check those out. If we want to add additional sprites to our project, we can do that with this option down here in the sprites area. So let's choose a sprite. Let's go ahead and add another animal to our project. Let's add a dog. So now we've added a dog sprite to our project. So anytime I have the dog sprite selected, let's say that he has this piece of code, you'll notice when I go back to my cat sprite that he doesn't have that code. So this code right here is unique to my dog sprite, as are the costumes and the sounds and so forth. The last item we'll get into are backdrops. So if we want to change the background of our project, what we can do is click on this button here, which is choose a backdrop. So we can go ahead and select one. We can also import our own. You'll see that's an option up here if you hover over that button. And that just allows us to create and add our own backgrounds, backdrops into the project. You can also paint your own or surprise yourself by clicking the button there as well. So once you're ready to share your project with the world, all you need to do is save your project and click the share button. And what that will do is it will make your project public so that others can see it. You can add instructions if, you're, if you have a game or a program that requires them. If you have any media or you want to give credit to your partner, you can add that in the notes and credits box here. And 
You can also enable or disable comments on your project by simply toggling that button there. And then if you ever need to go back and edit your project, you can click see inside and that will allow you to get back into your project into edit mode. If you're working on multiple projects, you can click on this button here. It's like a little folder and that'll bring you to your my stuff page. So you can see the project we just created was here. If we ever want to go back and work on it, we can click see inside. That has been a quick overview of how to get started with the Scratch platform. In the different projects and curriculum in your course, you'll have a lot more to do with the specifics as it comes to the coding and the sprites and the backdrops of your project. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and be sure to check out our other tutorials in the Knowledge Library and on our YouTube playlist.